If you ever are on your way to Whistler, don't forget to take the turn off to the Shannon Falls, one of the highest waterfalls of Canada and maybe the most beautiful. So this might be an awesome topic for our next painting. So let's create a masterpiece. Hello and welcome in the studio. Today it's all about water, masses of falling white water. And I already made a sketch in light grey and probably you think, oh Michael, what is this? But I promise you it's going to be a nice painting, no worries. Our special guest of today is Ludolf Backhuizen. He was the true master of sea, wind and water and above all, history. We got lots to do so, at work. As always, we can start painting with a nice glow above the mountains with some yellow ochre, a bit of lysum crimson and titanium white. Above that, we do three layers of grey to make it nice and misty. Above waterfalls is always a grey mist and cold also. With soft, gently brush strokes, we can go down over the yellow ochre layer to blend it in a bit. Above, a bit darker to create some background for the light. For this, I use a soft filbert brush. With some highlight, we can paint a few clouds. Not too much, just a few to give the trees and rocks some background. As you can see, I push the paint into the wet under layer and then blend it in with soft brush strokes. Let's do maybe one more and that will be enough for today. With different tones of grey like dark, middle and light grey, we can paint the background trees for the forest. I use a fan brush and that works great. On one side we can load the brush with light grey and the other side a darker tone. Let's look a little bit closer. I wiggle and wiggle the brush and don't go into details. We are not painting real branches or trees, it's all far away and it will be covered with green for more than 80%. And this is how you build up a decent forest. Now I always paint interesting spots on the island for once we stepped out because I always wanted to do this Shannon Falls. Years ago when my wife Els and I still lived in Europe, I saw this fall and I said once I would paint this waterfall. It's so beautiful. Waterfalls have something mystic. It's alive. You can make up all, all kinds of little stories about it. And that helps with painting. Now, Let's create this massive rock wall. It's huge. With a darker grey, I push the paint into the canvas. Now, thanks to my underpainting, it doesn't soak the paint too much. As you can see, I added a bit of burnt sienna to the grey. And with some lighter tone, we can set up some light, outstanding rocks. Look how I hold the brush. In the beginning, you won't like it, but now the brush is doing the work for you. Let's play a bit with the knife. Push the paint flat and scrape off a little row of light grey on the knife and with no pressure scrape it downwards into the wet grey. Right away you will have a great effect. We create a downwards movement of the rock. It can be anything like dripping moist or mold or whatever. And let's make a nice dark edge over there. Use your fantasy. You don't have to copy your photo. Go ahead and create your own world. Sometimes I mix a bit of ochre to the grey to give the rocks some more color. I can do here with a knife. Now, enough rocky stuff. Let's build up the falls. If we take a good look, it's all built up by giant blocks rock. 
Let's give the underlayer a nice wet middle tone gray. And again, I let the brush do the work for me. And right away, we have a nice surface where the water can fall down in all the holes and wherever it wants to go. As you can see here and there, I draw a few straight lines because there are different diagonals in a waterfall. And watch out with using the knife. It's addictive, but the result is so amazing good. And you already know it, no pressure. I hold the knife between three fingers and let it dance over the canvas. That will make it all nice and rough. And if it's a bit different than the original, well, what does it matter? As long as we're having fun, everything is allowed. I told you about the famous Dutch-German painter Ludolf Backhuizen. Let's take a look at his work. We are going back in history. The A in Amsterdam. The A was the harbor of Amsterdam. Literally translated, it means the egg. Makes no sense to you. But the name was the A. Now, Ludolf uses a low horizon in this painting with much reflections of the clouds and, of course, ships. He painted an extreme forest of masts, sails and ropes. He was able to draw and paint this scene without the help of any photograph, computer or whatever. How could he do this? The answer is simple. He was just a good drawer. What his eyes saw, his hands could do. And there's not many people who could do this. Let's take a look at his technique. Far away, every item is painted with soft grey tones. Closer by, it's all sharper focused, like the human eye. And what nobody knows is that the master himself is posing right in front of his painting, dressed up like a traveler, loaded with bags and trunks, waiting for the ferry. What I really like in this painting is that Ludolf shows us how people dressed up like this in the year 1673. As I was talking about a low horizon, well, on this smaller picture you can see it was all right. And, as, and of course we can see the beautiful sky Ludolf painted in this great painting. First, we can paint a bit more trees above the top of the falls. We need a little bit more background foliage. You don't need, you don't need to be very picky, it's just background trees. And then, with different tones of green, we can paint the evergreens. And thanks to the wet underlayer, it looks already nice and misty. Some trees might be a bit smaller, lighter, darker. It must be uneven, always take care of that. In nature, everything is uneven. I wonder how many millions of trees you have here in Canada. I wish we had a few in Holland. In Holland, all nature is man-made. Isn't that interesting? What a difference. And see how I handle the bristles. I wiggle and wiggle with my fan brush. And on both sides I got different colors. A light one and a dark tone. Now let's leave a small opening in trees so we can look right into the forest. That's always a good trick. And the technique is easy. You start with the trunk straight up and then you paint the branches in different sizes. That is really important. Those guys are not manicured trees in your garden. And for now, paint as much trees as you like. And right over the edge is always something growing, of course, like little weeds, branches, ferns, 
whatever. Perfect hiding places for our little friends like chipmunks, deer, maybe raccoons. Just let the foliage fall over the rocks. Do as much as you like. And it's already a total different view than when we started. And you have all the time in the world, so feel free to add way much more trees or rocks, whatever you want. Before we start painting the water, we can make the background, the back rocks, a bit darker. Just mix a darker tone and then we can make it rough with a knife. And look how easy that goes. Just pull down the knife, almost no pressure, and he does the work for you. See how great. Just do whatever you want and have some fun. That's the most important part of painting. With a light bluish gray and a fan brush, we can set up the white water. On a steep waterfall like this, the water takes every cap to fall down. So there are always dark places between the water curtains. On the edges, I let the water plunge down. And here I paint again a small curtain of water first, but I leave it transparent. I don't make it too solid. This fall is not a steady fall, it's just water plunging here and there. Oh, it's too dangerous to take a swim, I can assure you, don't do that, but it's not really a massive fall. And again, I continue with the splashing. Look how the fan brush does its work. It almost goes by itself. I only have to hold it. It's almost magic. And there is another curtain of water. Now, from the rocks, we can let it splash down with some more bubbles. They go everywhere, up and down, carried away by the wind. It always occurs to me that close by a waterfall, the temperature drops down, isn't that weird? Let's put up some sunshine on the water and load the brush with the same highlight as we used for the clouds at the beginning of the show. A little bit of titanium white with a small amount of cadmium yellow light. And there we go, splashing. Not too much, if you overdo it, the effect is gone. On top we can add some sunlight too. And probably you wonder if we have waterfalls in Holland. Well, we have lots of water but no falls. A few hundred kilometers above Holland lies Switzerland. And there we have the Rhine Falls. They are not really high, only 23 meters, but it, it's, an, it's a massive amount of water. What is coming down from the Rhine? This is the biggest fall of Europe, 150 meter wide and the mist and the sound is intense. Look how close those houses are built to the fall. A bit risky, but what a great view. Pay attention at the sunlight or the white water. And that is exactly what we will do on our falls. For now, we painted enough roaring and smashing water. Let's paint some foliage in the foreground to give the painting a little bit more depth. With dark green and a fan brush, we can put up the foliage on the side. Yes, I know it's a bit fast, but we have to, otherwise this show would take us three hours. And I'm a slow painter, it is like it is. But I'm sure you can follow my technique. I always have two colors loaded on my fan brush. That works great. A dark green and a light green because we wiggle and turn the bristles all the time, we have a great result right away. Don't go too much in details, it's all misty and far away. And look how we created depth by painting all this foliage. Before we go any further, we can do a few things with a knife on the foreground rocks. There are some huge square rocks right in front of the falls. And take a good look what I'm doing. I'm pushing the 
knife slowly downwards with almost no pressure on the knife. Just a bit of light cray will do the trick. And once more it makes it all more three-dimensional. Then we will paint some more weeds, leaves, branches and all what grows there in the wild right in the front. When you do a painting like this, it's always important to work from the back to the front. We started with a rock wall in the back, set up the water, put some rock right in front of it and at last the foliage. Now the viewer gets the idea that we are looking into the painting. Down below there are three big rocks. With a dark grey we can set it up. The second one is a little bit bigger and don't forget that the light is coming in from the right side. So use a bit of light grey on the right side of the rocks. And of course some darker on the shadow, on the shadow side. Remember an even numbers in nature works always great. And that is why we have to paint three rocks. First paint a bit more light grey on the sunny side of the rocks and then it's time for the third rock. Same technique. I told you the knife is addictive. With a bit of light grey we can put up the light on the rocks on the right side that is. And look what a great effect. On the shadow part a bit darker grey and we have another wonderful rock. Now it looks massive and tortured by the water and whatever. It's so easy. Just two fingers and let it dance into the wet paint. Of course the foreground needs some weeds, ferns and low growing foliage to finish it all off. And don't forget to put some very light green too. We have one more little surprise. Let's be brave and with some dark grey and a bit of burnt shadow. We can create a tree at the foreground. It's very easy. Just take a round brush or you can do it with your fan brush, whatever, and just go ahead. But first let's take a little break. As British Columbia has a very interesting mining industry, this might be the best place to discover everything. The Britannia Mining Museum. Again we stepped into the world of mining and it occurs to me that the engineers of the locomotives are always young and pretty. This in contradiction with what we learned, learned in the Wild West books and movies we saw in Europe where engineers are bearded, sturdy, old, diehards. And this beauty leads us with a big smile and a sturdy hand directly into the gates of hell. Because hell it was. I don't like narrow spaces to be honest with you. But here deep in the mountain where it's cold, dampy and very very dark, the miners had to crush stones, worked with dynamite and had to deal with all kinds of terrible dangers. As we put our lives into the hands of our little pretty guide, she gives us a nice impression how life must have been in those days of the mining. Here she shows how to throw with big stones. Impressive and not without danger. For the miners working with picks, however, this machine was already a big relief. And this is how really dark it was. This is all the light we had to work in. Later the carbide camp arrived, lamp arrived, but it's still almost nothing. And it's all very interesting, but very relieved I step into the open fresh air right behind my sweet elves carrying the equipment. Of course I have to show you my brand new truck, which has such an amount of space for all the film equipment. How cool is that? Crushing all the other cars on the highway, only parking might be an issue. And your teacher is also looking for gold. 
In vain, of course, he will stay a starving artist. But this little prospector knows how it works. Listen to this. A Minecraft I made like a TNT spaceship, I think. But I don't know if it actually works. I think it must explode. Isn't that cute? But we suffered enough cold and hardships and with the ferry we went home again to the warm studio. And we are still having fun with the falls. With the trunk, that is. With a bit of yellow ochre, the same mix as we used for the sky, and a bit burnt shanna, we used a knife to put up some bark on the tree trunk. And look how great it works. The knife goes great for setting up bark like this. In the shadow, we can paint some dark or milk gray as a kind of backlight. Not too much, just a bit. And when you think it's enough, it's enough. Always follow your heart. Now, let's load a bit of very light cream on the fan brush. Just add a bit of cadmium yellow light, that's enough. And then paint some light leaves here and there in the foliage. And that will work so great, look at that. Now it's really coming forward. And of course we can do this in several places to lighten up the whole front. Down below we can add some ferns and grasses. Well, it's up to you. Be brave and let's put up one more tree. It's the last one, I promise. But first I have one more little story about Ludolf Backhausen. Being a German from Emden, Ludolf really loved Holland and especially Amsterdam. He lived for a while on the Rosengracht, free translated the Canal of the Roses, where he painted this view on Amsterdam and again the harbor of the Egg. He loved all those ships and again a masterpiece. Later, Ludolf moved away to England where he really became famous and rich. But at the end of his life, he returned to his beloved old Amsterdam. He lived on the Herengracht, that means the Canal of the Lords, and he passed away at the age at about 78. But Ludolf had a little surprise. After the funeral, all his friends and visitors were invited to the cafe De Hand Boogdoelen for a huge party. Ludolf donated 80 Dutch kilders, which should be now around $8,000 maybe. Because he didn't want people to cry or be upset. He said, I had a lovely life, I was rich, famous, I had everything. So let's build a party with drinking, singing, music, feasting, eating and so on. I call that good humor. Yes, it's so beautiful at Old Amsterdam. I would like to stay in shed, but we have to finish a painting. I started to paint some leaves on a tree, but you better wait till it's dry. The wet underlayer is so terribly wet that my paint is soaking. But as we have to continue for the show, we will be brave and go on. As usual, I start with dark green, then some middle tone green, and at last, of course, some highlight green. This will give me a little bit of time to tell you that I will donate all the paintings made for this show to the Anne Mary Bailey Fund. This is a fund for sick children in BC. So if you would like to do a bit on one of the paintings, that would be so awesome. Thank you so much. If you happen to be in Parksville, check out our new lesson center. We teach art, music and scrapbooking card making and there is so much art to discover. As you might know, my wife Els and I worked day and night to get it all done, but now it's there. And 
everybody loves the place. A unique place in the world where you can discover all your talents you never were aware of. And of course, we are there for you with all our service to help you. We've done it, another great painting. I hope you liked it and please come by for a little chat in our wonderful new lesson center. I promised you a roaring waterfall. Well, here it is, all set. As always, you can find everything on our website. Thanks for watching and keep on painting.